So welcome again to the Creative Health Series at the MS Self Help Group of Santa Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to talk about supercharging your copaxin. And you can add, you know, Tecfidera, vitamin D, your organic, et cetera, et cetera, as the ingredient. But today we're going to supercharge whatever you take. So as we start, I wanted to ask, what does supercharge mean? If you're going to supercharge something, what are you doing? It's going to make it intense. Pump, pumping it up. Pump it up. Pumping it up. Uh huh. Okay. So if you're hoping your Capaxin works, is that supercharging it? No. That's wishful thinking. If you're, oh my gosh, I hope this works, I hope this works, is that supercharging it? Nope. If you're taking it because you're afraid it's just going to get bad, you know, worse and you're just feeling guilty, yeah. does that supercharge it? Probably not. So, whatever you're taking, it's really important to ask yourself, am I hoping this will work? Or am I expecting it to work? So if whatever you take, the Copaxin, you're like, you're expecting it to work, you just feel in your bones, this is what I'm going to use, do you think that's going to help supercharge it? If you're diligent, I don't know if you guys have ever heard or maybe had this experience. Someone tells you about this great new treatment and you're psyched. Or a great meditation and you're like, full on like, oh, this is going to work. And that first experience is amazing. And then it seems to trail off. And it's because there was an expectation, I think this is gonna work. And then the doubts come in. But that first buildup, which is always good, that your doctor, the, the commercials, that whatever, really builds you up, and, oh my, I think this is gonna be the solution. Because that's a huge piece of your body actually opening up to the possibility. And that's something that's actually been studied in a science that's considered new because it was only 1970s called psychoneuroimmunology. And in psychoneuroimmunology, they realized that if your psyche is convinced of something, your neurons, your nervous system, and your immune system are going to respond. Is that called the placebo effect? They kind of blanket into the placebo effect, but tell me this. They, one of the first studies in 1974 by a researcher named Adder, he had a group of mice that were lupus, tends to have lupus. And so they wanted to give them immunosuppressants. Um, but they gave it to them with um, saccharin sweet water. And then they stopped giving them the immunosuppressant, but kept giving them the saccharin and their immune system continued to suppress mm -hmm. to the point that a lot of his mice were dying from water. Would you call that placebo? I would call that um, learning um, it's Pavlov's dog. Yes, it's a conditioning. <laughs> yeah. It's a conditioning. But another uh, researcher, Gorjinsky, did the opposite. He had a medication he wanted to use, something that would be very good for your immune, get it all robust. And so what he did with his mice is he would give them the immune, you know, enhancer kind of thing. He added it, always give it to them while feeding them a flavored water mm -hmm. for a very short period of time and then stopped giving them the medication and just kept giving them the flavored water and the immune system kept building up. Again. The body is thinking that taste, I'm relating it to something. Mm -hmm. This was actually in, there was actually a case of a doctor using it with a young child. I think she was 12 years old, she was very sick, and he knew there was only one medication that might help, but it had so many side effects. It was such a powerful medication, and her body was so depleted already that he knew if he gave it to her, his or her organs might shut down. So he said, I need to give it to her somehow to get her body, to stimulate her body, but not long enough 
for the side effects to kick in. So he did the same thing. He said, let's find, let's find some flavor that you don't have in any of the foods you've ever eaten, because I don't want, you know, watermelon to stimulate your, body, your mm -hmm. immune system. And then he did the same thing. He gave her the medication for a short period of time, and she always drank it with the flavored water. And then he extracted the medication, and the body continued to respond to the flavored water as if she's taking the medication. And so she got the pros. In hypnosis, we use it, for example, for someone who needs to take chemo. So pretty much probably, does everyone know here that chemo usually tends to make you lose your hair? Who's never heard of that? We've heard of it so much that even in research studies where they're comparing chemo to a placebo, those that are taking the placebo also lose their hair. And it's because we expect it to happen. So ask yourself, are there things I'm expecting to happen with my MS? So what hypnotherapy does there is we work with the client and say, okay, when you take your chemo, you're going to listen to recording or you're going to do self-hypnosis. And you're going to imagine that when you're taking the chemo, that chemo is going to go directly to the area it needs to go to. And it's going to help. It's going to be a nutrient for that area. And it's going to give the rest of your body relief. And it's not going to affect any other part of your body. It's going to give the rest of your body time to recover and, and take a break. And, and it's just going to make your body stronger. And just by listening to a recording, envisioning the chemo going to a specific place and not affecting the rest of the body, those people do not have hair loss. Psychoneuroimmunology. Surgeries are hardly ever researched because it's not ethical to open someone up and close them. So this doctor actually wanted to do a double-blind research study on the different methods used for arthritic knee pain. And so he had three groups. One would do a placebo. And what he would do is he actually he would take the men to the same surgery, open up their knee, have a video recording of a surgery playing, and they'd be slaps, sla you know, splashing water and everything, just so that the person had no clue that he's not getting the surgery, he or she. And they made sure that they stayed in the surgery, in the room, the same amount of time of any, as any other patient. And then they had the other two methods. One was flushing, and one was scraping or something. And the conclusion to that research was all three groups did just as well. The group that thought, this is going to be my solution for my knee pain, was just as effective as the other two groups. Now, does that mean that the, oh, don't, don't do any remedies, no treatments, your, your knee will go well? Do you think the knee will respond in the <coughs> same way? Probably not. But the whole ritual of preparing for a knee surgery, taking time off, doing physical therapy afterwards, you know, being careful, et cetera, et cetera, and knowing this is what I'm doing for my arthritic knee to get better had just as much of an effect. So that you don't think, oh, that's because that's, you know, that's what they didn't know. There was another researcher named Helen Langer. In her case, she wanted to make sure, does it still work even though you know what you're doing? And so what she did, this was in the also, I think in the 70s, she took a group of 70-year-olds, and she says, it's when 70 was really 70, not like now, 70, 60. <laughs> um, she took a group of 70-year-olds and took them to a, it's like a castle in the middle of nowhere, like a retreat place. And for a full week, these 70-year-olds were going to act as if they were 50. And so in this retreat center, she had the old televisions, you know, from the 50s, this was in the 70s. She had the magazines and the newspapers of the 50s. She had the radio going in the 50s. And they were supposed to talk to each other as if they were 50 and talk about things that happened to them in the 50s for just a, year, a week. They knew what they were doing. After a week of this, they had better eyesight. Their joints were more flexible. They actually were you know, taller, so they were less crunched up. 
In conclusion, their bodies used because they decided to play. And as their psyche stayed in the 50s set mindset, their you know, nervous system and their immune system said, all right, let's be 50 then. Do you guys know if 70-year-olds are like Peter Pans and they're just, they look like 50? And 70-year-olds are like old oh, women? What's the difference? So I'm just kind of telling you these elements just to give a little inspiration of what is possible. Okay? And really for you to realize that it's not positive thinking we're talking about here, it's direct thinking. Right? We are directing our thinking and through that directing our bodies into certain states. So that's kind of like what NLP does. It's directing. And with NLP what we do is not only direct the thinking, we actually, and we're going to do that today, we actually go into the subconscious and figure out how does the subconscious already know certain things? And over here doesn't. And can I apply things that are, you know, this kind of pattern to this kind of problem? So we actually also go into mind patterns. And we're going to do a little bit of that today. So I don't know if you guys have heard this uh, quote, believe that it will work, and you're halfway there. I think Eleanor Roosevelt or Henry Ford said this, so they probably both said it in their own ways. Decide it's going to work and you're halfway there. And I use this word decide very um, poignantly. It's not that you have to be convinced, that you have to be believe or be gullible, but decide. This is what I'm going to do. And just like the guys, the 70 year olds, this is what I'm going to do. And let the body follow you through repetition, repetition, repetition. So take a moment to make a list of everything you are doing or taking to heal from the MS. And that includes any medication, any sleeping, any food. What are you doing specifically? And I'll give you a little story before we continue. I've, there was um, in NLP, one of our um, teachers interviewed a whole bunch of people that were over a hundred to find out what's your secret. Every single one of them can tell you what they do to stay 100. Every single one of them have a ritual. I drink a glass of whiskey every day. I walk two miles every day. Oh well you know I take a nap. Well I eat my mom's pasta. Everyone has a ritual. That thing they do intentionally which They've decided is the thing that keeps them healthy. So, without anything else, just make a list of what are the things that you are doing, taking. To heal, to revert, to reverse, to course correct, to manage the mess. Don't write, oh, I want to do these things. I should be doing these things. That's, that's going to get you into the guilt and everything else. You do, if anything. And if not, no worries. By the time today, you might have some ideas. It's no longer way doing this. This also includes enjoying the rain. Yes. And enjoy the rain pill every day. <laughs> A dose of rain. When the rain comes, I take my plants outside. Once, one of them got stolen in my office, but the other ones love it. Someone must have thought I had them out for free. <laughs> and again, it can be journaling. It can be getting eight hours of sleep when you used to only get five. It can be those vitamins. It could be the vegan diet. It can be the 
gluten-free diet. It can be the tomato-free diet. It could be the walk on the ocean, near the ocean over there. And as you look at your list, just kind of ask yourself, when you're taking these things, do you expect them to improve your health? Or are you taking them because you're just hoping? Or like, oh, if I just do all this stuff, hopefully, you know, I'll get a big enough cocktail of you know, things. Or I have to do this because if I don't do this perfectly and I eat one donut, you know. How are you taking it? And is there hope? Is there stress? Is there expectation? Okay, so with kind of the list, what I want to do with you today is actually make it more intentional. Because the more intentional, the more you change and have a mindset that's like, this is what I'm taking it for. This is what I'm going to decide I'm going to expect. And what I would definitely invite you guys to do is decide that you're going to inspect, expect this to be give you more strength, give you more balanced, give you more energy, rather than I expect this to keep me from going in a wheelchair, to keep me from getting less balanced. Because if I say those words, what are you envisioning? Less balance, wheelchair, no wheelchair, no wheelchair. What are you envisioning? Wheelchair. <laughs> but if I say the words energy, balance, your knees are stronger. Mm -hmm. Examples. What are you taking? Gabapentin, Baclofen, Propanol, Adderall, Duloxetine, Vitamin D, Lorazepam, Benadryl, Tysabri. And when you see that list, what do you, just kind of check in. We're going to see how your mind thinks about them. When you're thinking about those elements, mm -hmm. what are you expecting to happen? Just let your mind go and notice what do you see as you think about that question? What are you expecting to happen? When I take the propanol, I expect to not shake. Uh huh. Um, when I take the gabapentin, I expect the pain to lessen. Um, the back of them, because the propanol is bright green, so when I see the color green, like I'm not shaking. It's a stable color for me now. But at first, I thought they were key. Um, the Adderall, I expect to get hyper. Um, the Benadryl, I expect to just fall asleep wherever I am. <laughs> yeah. So, I get each so as you're thinking of those, as you're saying, OK, I expect to fall asleep wherever I am, mm -hmm. notice, these are strange questions, notice. Are you seeing yourself out there falling asleep wherever she is, or are you feeling it in your body? Feeling it in my body. You're feeling in your body the zzz, 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 or are you seeing her out there like? Oh, I'm seeing. I'm seeing myself like falling asleep. Yeah. Here. So you're seeing. So as you're thinking of that, and thinking of, oh, this is what's going to happen. You're actually seeing yourself out there falling yeah. asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but is it a vivid image? Is it a kind of a kind of fuzzy, is it kind of like pretty it's pretty vivid. It's a vivid image of there I am doing that thing. Yeah. And it is a video or is it a snapshot that yeah. uh, probably more of a snapshot. Yeah. So there's like a snapshot of you Yeah, just out. Out. Good. Mm -hmm. so, who else would I like to share? Let me get a couple of <coughs> Yeah. Well, I started with medication. But then, and supplements, which, you know, could be for any of us. Um, but then I just put in more of, day, like you said about daily rituals. I, I like what you were saying, you know, eating grandma's pasta or something like that. So I threw that kind of stuff in. Uh, yoga, mindfulness, breathing, uh, stretch, swim in warm weather, <laughs> <laughs> eat well. Rest when needed. Um, talk to loved ones. Wine daily. <laughs> and um, MS Gym is kind of new. Mm -hmm. So when you look at your list, what do you expect to happen? What do you expect these things to do for MS? 
I think it's more from what it does for me. Um, I'm not really, because the MS is, I feel it in my body all the time. And so I guess that's part of me, so I'm doing it so that what makes me feel better, those things make me feel better. Or cope or whatever. Uh -huh. Okay. That's so I'm seeing this, it's like I'm wrapping myself up with these things. Yeah. And if I'm feeling better, the VMS is feeling Well, if I, if I don't eat well, then I don't feel good. You know, I, I'm lethargic, or you know, I don't know, you just, if you don't eat well, you don't feel good. Um, if you don't move or stretch, you know, you feel tight. And if, you know, I don't relate or talk, talk to loved ones or get in touch, I get sad, I get too much in my own head, you know, I, I need to, you know, relate to people. Okay, okay. So the things that you're taking are things that allow you to physically feel good and mentally feel good. Uh -huh. okay. What's your first name? Mary. Mary, just as Mary just mentioned, I do the same thing just to keep me on track, in balance, doing the things I love to do. I like that visual. There's like a, this is me. As long as I do these things, there's a movement forward. And so as you do this, are you seeing Ken moving forward or just feel yourself propelled by that hand? Just kind of notice we're, we're, we're making something conscious that's usually unconscious. As you're thinking about, I'm doing this and I'm doing the rain and I'm doing, you know. Do you see Ken out there, you know? Yeah, yeah, continuing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you see him out there? Mm -hmm. Now let's just try and see how does your mind expect things rather than trying to make it happen. Let's just figure it out, right? There's always a secret ingredient to everything. So think of something that you take for some other issue, like when you have the flu. When you twisted your ankle, when you <clears throat> cut yourself, what do you take or do that you expect is going to work every time? Ibuprofen works for headaches. Uh huh. So you know if you have an, a headache, you're going to take ibuprofen. Yeah, not just headaches, but leg spasms. Leg spasms and headaches. Uh huh. So, how do you know? This is a, again a strange question. So, give it a moment. How do you know to expect the ibuprofen to work? The fact that it has worked the last twenty times I took it. Okay. So when you say the fact that it has worked the last twenty times you took it, notice for you to be able to say that. Notice what's in your mind's eye. Take a moment. To, are you seeing John taking it, taking it, taking it, take successful? Are you seeing John, da da da? Or are you just feeling, oh yeah, there I am. Oh yeah, this worked. Oh yeah, this worked. Notice, how does your mind do it? How does your mind know? Just expects it to. It expects it to because, check it in, check because out. Because it has done it before. It's done it before. And when you say that, can you remember? Do you have it like off the top of your head? Oh yeah, look, I three days ago. Yeah. yeah? And when you think of that time three days ago or whenever that was, as you think about that time, are you seeing John take it and you're feeling good? Or are you, as you think about that memory, see we're all different. So notice, how does your mind remember you? Does it see you being successful or do you regress back to a week ago and you take you know and it just you feel the improvement immediately think about these former experiences notice how your mind thinks about it do you get visuals do you hear yourself do you feel yourself getting better notice yeah i just feel like all of a sudden my legs stop spasming now. the pain goes away all right so <coughs> uh -huh. what i'm hearing is you is it almost like a, uh, it's like a snapshot, or it's almost like a video, but you're in your body and you're just feeling it just going away, going away, going away. Does that seem to be how your mind 
remembers and expects something to happen? It goes away. It goes you away. It. Um, it goes away. It goes away. So in his case, whatever he wants to use as a remedy, his mind knows something that works when it has an experience of it physically in his body going away, right? Not wrapping himself up with something and hoping he'll feel, if I feel better or if I've got a good attitude, then it'll be better. He is visualizing something. Yours, can you think of one? I was thinking about um, when I'm really anxious, um, like I'll smoke, thinking that it will make me less anxious. Um, and I'm like seeing myself, like it's more like my hands with like, like touching what I'm like touching or, um, and, but when I'm really, when I'm like kind of stepping back a little bit, like what I'm really seeing is, like when I think about it, is I'm in my room, I'm in my place that makes me feel less stressed out, but I'm adding the smoking that it might be where I am. So think Not of something that, that you really that you know good. you use. We want success. Oh no no I, I yeah it's, it you, works. It's, oh yeah it works very okay. successfully. But it's from okay. what you were saying that like there yeah. might be there might be a space outside of just that act of yeah. smoking that I'm like oh this is gonna relax me. I'm not gonna be anxious anymore after this. And I do have like kind of a routine with it. Like I go into my room, I close my door. I, um, you know, I smoke quietly on my bed where there's no noise and it's quiet and, and then I'm, you know, take a deep, you know, and then I'm also breathing more intentionally because I'm trying to inhale. Yeah, I heard it when I said it. Yeah, and look at, yeah, I am. Breathing. You're breathing and as you're explaining all this, you're not seeing yourself out there laying down, mm -hmm. squat, photo. It's actually an internal, it's a video, it's a, it's a process, right? Yeah. I'm noticing this is going to do this for me, and I'm doing all these little steps, and just like John, and I succeed. Yeah. Why I'm putting this out is we each have, it, it, we have an ingredient to help our minds expect something to make us better. So imagine if as you take the injection next week, you're imagining that you're going into your wonderful spot because that, that space is like your room, it's very welcoming, someone's massaging you, etc. And from the inside, which is how your mind was dealing with the anxiety, from the inside you're feeling your body going, oh, this is what I take. And you just let yourself kind of imagine the whole process until the moment of success. So sometimes it's just, it's finding, it's comparing rather than trying to make something up. You know, how do I do it other things? So this actually comes from a teacher of NLP, um, Connie Ray Andreas, and she had a breast infection. And she would get breast infection anytime she, with one of her kids anytime that she was breastfeeding. And she realized when she thought about her breast infection, she's like, what do I expect to happen? Next time, you know, now I have a new kid, what did I expect to happen? And she realized in her head, she's seeing herself going, oh, it's starting to bother me, and then getting in bed, and then the flu, and then, and she was like, well, no wonder every time it's just getting worse. And then she thought about, well, what do I expect to happen when I have the flu? And she just kind of sat with it, what do I expect to happen? Like John, oh, it's happened a lot of times, and I'm noticing, oh, I, Oh well, yeah, that thing of, oh, I got the flu, I get into bed, and then that, you know that wonderful moment when you wake up and you're like, oh, is this mean I'm going to get better? Because all of a sudden you can breathe. Or then that moment that you get up and you're like, I think my energy's back, right? And then all of a sudden, and she realized in her head, with the flu, she knew she was going to get better because her mind is telling her the story of the recovery. Not with the breast infection, the story of the doom. And so she envisioned the next time she was going to get that inkling of breast infection, doing the same thing, going to bed, 
and then getting a little better and feeling better, 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 better until she was great. And then what she did is she stuck it, she imagined it 20 years from ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five, three months ago, two days ago, because she needed to have a whole story of proof like you. I've done it 20 times. Well, imagine if you actually imagine this 20 times in 20 different moments of your life. That's proof for your mind. So decide of your list or anything else you want to add, what is going to be your healing remedy? And when you take it, visualize, not what you want to avoid, as you know the different ones we've seen. Visualize how good it feels to take it. And it's like those 70 year olds. Do you think the first day they're playing around with pretending they're 50, they're feeling awesome? <laughs> Probably not. They're like, yeah, let me get up. Yeah, I'll come play tennis with you just a second. You know? But they did it, and they did it, and they kept doing it, and they kept acting as if, it's like the neuroimmunology, that is who I am. And the body caught up. This was only a week, probably if they've been there more more changes would have happened. Can I challenge you? Go for it. Um, so that was my mode when I, before I realized what I had. I didn't realize I had to just talk to a doctor. He was like, oh, it's just a little thing on my leg. It'll go away. Okay. How is that different than what you're, you're suggesting you do? Like the so fake it until you make it kind of, like I was like, oh, well, it's just going to go away kind of thing. And it'll be fine. I'm assuming I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, when you have the flu, do you just make it, do you just completely ignore it and keep doing what you're doing every day, wake up the same time, eat the same food, do as much work, and get to bed as late as you usually get when you have the flu? And you just ignore it and go, oh, it'll go away. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it successful? It does work sometimes. Because <laughs> if, if I, like, it's that first inkling of it, then, like, I get that all the time with my allergies, and sometimes it's my allergies and sometimes it's the flu. So there you know to check it, to just wait and see. But once you know it's the flu, is the strategy ignore it or oh, I'll deal with itself? The strategy you really use. I'm a wuss, I definitely, I'm sick. So I lay down and don't get up and decide I gotta get through this. Okay. You need rest. And you know if you get rest, do you think you can have flu for the next 12 months? <laughs> no. Why not? You know this will pass. You know it will pass. And you're, you're like, oh my god, I don't want to stay in bed. I mean, at the very end, yes, you're like, oh, I'm so tired of bed. But at the beginning, you're like, I'm giving in. Maybe that's part of your remedy. Another thing I also noticed when um, Bun was talking about cancer, and we looked at how does she talk about something that she knows she's going to heal, and it was the flu, and how something that she doesn't know. And in one case, she said, well, oh, yeah, when I get the flu, I just know I have to da-da-da, and then the flu goes away. I said, oh, great. Okay, talk to me about your cancer. Oh, when I had my cancer, I was so da 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 and I thought, I said, hmm, that's interesting. Can you talk about cancer as the cancer instead of my cancer and notice what happens? So take yourselves. Instead of talking about my MS, do you guys say I have, I have flu? <laughs> I am a fluer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know what? You guys all are because you've had it before 20 years ago and you probably had it last year. You guys are fluers. Hmm. But if you say, you know, the MS, the MS is a little acting up today, or, oh, flu, you know, it's spreading around and I seem to have caught some of it. Caught some of it. The MS is kind of up today. It's very different. And your body will treat it very different. Yeah. So whatever you decide to take. Another thing I, I do, at least myself, is I, I started taking vitamin D. And I, I, I buy, uh, it's like these uh, gummy bears. <laughs> I hate taking pills. So um, I take vitamin D and I take uh, omega-3 oils. 
So I always get to have a gumi there at the end. And that's my vitamin D. That's another great way. If you're taking like the chemo or you're taking the medication and you're like, oh, this is icky, this is icky, this is icky, what do you think your body's going to, how well is it going to take it? But if you're like, ooh, I get to have a jelly bean every day. I'm always like, should I have jelly bean after breakfast or after lunch? Can they make these in 500 instead of 1,000? That way I have two jelly beans. Seriously. That's another one. Mix it with something. The day you get your shot, I don't know about you, but my mom, anytime I had to go to the dentist afterwards, I get to go buy a present and we got to buy a $5 something and it was always a little stuffed animal or something, right? And it was like, yes, I'm going to the dentist. You know, or school. I get, you know, I get to have new notebooks and a new backpack. Those kind of things convince your body too and your mind to be receptive and open to it. So think about those things. All right. Thank you. Any questions? It is definitely helpful because I don't like giving myself shots. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think about it from that perspective before. Mm -hmm. Chocolate. <laughs> yes, chocolate's brain food. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so going to eat brain food every day after lunch. <laughs>